Welcome to this anniversary workshop of the Cognitive Development Center at CEU. My name is Gergely Cibra. I am one of the founding directors of this center. The other is George Gergely, who is sitting here in the second row. Um, I will give you a five-minute introduction to the center, to the history of the center. So we started the center very modestly, as you can see. We shared the tiny desk with Yuri in a tiny room, which also accommodated all of my boxes that I brought with me from London. Uh, but we were not just the two of us. There were three uh, women who helped us to practically uh, establish the research infrastructure that we needed uh, for the center. And from the very, very beginning, we also had two young postdocs working with us, although not uh, officially at CEU, but uh, already starting with us. By the next year, we started to grow. We had two more postdocs and uh, visiting students and so on. But the uh, most important development in that year was that we actually moved into this very strange looking building on the other side of the city where we had spacious offices and uh, wonderful labs. Uh, where we started to actually run some experiments uh, at the, by the end of uh, 2009. And the very first participant in an infant EEG study was, this, was the son of this young lady, who probably you recognize her. Uh, that was early two, 2010 already. Uh, Vicky came to Budapest not just to let her son participate in our studies, but also to participate in an opening conference, which uh, was in January 2010. It was opened by the then rector and president of CEU, John Shattuck. And it was actually a full house of the, of, in the old auditorium of, the, of, of, of CEU in the, in the other building. Uh, uh, probably it, it, it generated a huge interest. Many people came from all over the world to, to attend this conference, probably because of the spectacular lineup of speakers that we had at that time, uh, because we invited uh, six uh, people who we really admired uh, their work and who inspired our work uh, a lot. And it seems that it inspired many other people because many people came to, uh, to listen to them. Uh, by the success of the conference, we realized that there was something missing in Europe, a kind of regular conference that, uh, uh, that is devoted for, to community development. So we thought that we would establish one, and so we did. And this is how the BCCCD was born, uh, of which the 10th edition will start tomorrow. Uh, you will also see here the evolution of graphical design and <laughs> during the uh, last 10 years. That conference started a little bit uh, smaller, but, but steadily grew during the, the years, both in terms of number of posters, talks, the registered participants, and so on. Uh, probably see the, the number on the, on the last slide here. That's a, uh, we already have more than 360 registered participants for this conference, so we, we expect a completely full house by tomorrow here. So uh, going back to the, to the center, uh, at 2010, we, this is how many we were, we comfortably could s sit on and around a, a sofa. It was a little bit more difficult in 2011 because we grew. In 2012, we moved to another room to, make, to take the photo because uh, uh, we needed more space and another room in 2013 because we, we, just, we, just, we just started to grow further and then further and further. And by 2000, 2015, we have a much more spacious uh, room for the for the photo because we actually moved into a, a new uh, building. We had a new lab, which is just around the corner here. Uh, new lab in an old house. This is how the house looked like when uh, it was built in the 1830s. This is how it looked like until very recently. Um, uh, until a restaurant, neighboring restaurant, started to build in the, the, the ground floor windows of this, on this building. So no, I think we are uniquely the only infant lab in the world where we open a window and it opens into a restaurant. <laughs> Fortunately, it only affects two of us, uh, our windows, so it's, we, are, uh, we, we still have windows to the, uh, to, the, to the streets as well. And inside this lab, we have uh, uh, wonderfully equipped labs and, uh, and, and a, a beautiful reception room. I just show you this figure. This is the wiring diagram of one of the labs. It's, it's a piece of art in itself, I, I think. So going back to the, to the group, we 
with this more space, we started to grow even further. As you see, the sofa is back. Uh, and in 2016, we also opened an, another lab in the Budapest Zoo uh, to study not the zoo animals, but the zoo visitors' uh, uh, children. And then 2017, uh, Lex CEU happened. Many of you know, probably know about this. We are still very happy there, but you can see that, that the, the, at least the bear is protesting on the, on, on the chair. The bear stayed with us in the following years, so in 19 and, uh, 18 and 19, and, and it's still, still with us. So all this, all this growth of the center was practically was made possible by the really generous research grants that we received from the uh, ERC. Uh, we, we received uh, five of them, and two of them are, are over, but three of them are, 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 are still running. And if you are interested in numbers, there are no, I know that there are data scientists here, so here are the numbers, number of uh, actually studies test sessions in the lab, how it, how it was growing, in, separating the baby lab in the zoo lab, with a number of different experiments, at least experimental conditions in the, that, that we run in, in the labs. Uh, and this is the number of PhD students we, we, we have in, in the center. Uh, uh, which was plateaued about three years ago because we started to actually uh, graduate them. Uh, so there are, there, there, there are no, uh, at least as many PhD students leave the lab as, 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 as many as are leaving. And we're also fortunate to, uh, to welcome uh, visiting PhD students as well in the labs who, who, who did their graduate work somewhere else but spent uh, two months or some of them six months or even more in the labs. This is probably not a complete list, so I apo apologize if I left out uh, uh, people from there, but I know that many of them actually in, the, in, the, in this room, and uh, it's always good to see them back. We also had wonderful visiting professors who spent at least a semester or sometimes more uh, with us. I see, you see that we have uh, among them developmental psychologists like Josef Perner and Klaus von Hofsten, and but also philosophers like Steve Butterfield and Pierre Jacob, Anthropologists like Clark Barrett, uh, uh, linguists like Nausi Kapuskulus, and polyhistors like, like, like Chaba Play. So this is how the uh, center looks like now. This uh, photo was taken about uh, three weeks ago. Um, and the, uh, I just counted there are 33 people on this, on this picture, not including the baby and the stuffed animals. Uh, and, it's, and it doesn't even include everyone, so that was not, not everyone at the, at, at, the, at the photo session. So that was my first, uh, my, my five-minute history of the, five-minute summary of the history of the, of the CDC, and it didn't include anything about the kind of research that we do. I didn't have to because we, I think we, we were represented at the workshop by, by two talks. So before we start the workshop, uh, uh, for the president and rector of this university, uh, Professor Michael Ignatieff would want to say a couple of words. Good morning. It uh, gladdens my heart, as I'm sure it gladdens the CDC to see so many people here, to see in effect a full house, and to see that a conference that began in 2010 is now an international event that commands interest and stimulates research around the world. Um, I'm here to say three very brief things, um, since you definitely didn't come to listen to me. Um, the first is to talk about CU and the situation we're in, talk a little bit about what cognitive science and CDC means to CU, um, and then say a little bit about uh, our transition to Vienna and the place of CDC in that transition. Um, oh, and I have a fourth purpose, which is to try and make the two Gergos blush, and I shall do that at the very end, and we'll see whether they do blush. I hope with pleasure. Um, first thing to say is a little bit about CU for those of you who don't know our university. I, I particularly delighted to see people from around the world, from our Hungarian colleagues and friends from Europe, from North America. 
But as some of you know, we've had a little local difficulty with the Hungarian government. And uh, it's produced one little fact which I think encapsulates something about the state of academic freedom in Europe in 2020 of which we should be aware. And that fact is that in 2019, the Hungarian government expelled from its capital city a US accredited institution that had been there since 1991 and had gained a reputation in the humanities and social sciences that uh, we're proud of. Uh, we are the most research intensive and most research productive university in Hungary and one of the most productive in Europe. And we were thrown out of the country in the same year, this is the fact, that the Hungarian government welcomed into Budapest Fudan University from Shanghai. Now, Fudan University from Shanghai is a pretty serious good place, as those of you know it. I've got no knock on Fudan and Shanghai. But in the month in which Fudan was welcomed into Hungary, Fudan changed its charter to eliminate from the charter of Fudan University the words academic freedom and institutional autonomy. So get the picture? A university that stands for institutional autonomy and academic freedom was thrown out, and a university that has consciously had to abandon that and substitute instead conformity to the Communist Party of China has been welcomed in. So go figure, as they say in the United States. We will be transitioning all our US degree programs to Vienna in September 2020. And one of the flagship programs that will come with us to Vienna in a phase transition will be CDC and cognitive science. I do want to make that clear. We have wonderful baby labs, which you've seen across the, on the slides. They're just next door. We're intensely proud of them. Uh, it is the only experimental lab that we maintain at the university. We're a small social science and humanities institution that 10 years ago thought, boy, wouldn't it be this cognitive science stuff, there's something in this. And um, a predecessor of mine, a visionary predecessor of mine, Yehuda Elkanah, thought there was something there, and boy, was there ever something there. Uh, and we have uh, watched with astonishment and pride as the Cognitive Development Center has grown. It's had an important contribution to our relations to, to Budapest, which needs to be emphasized. It's one of the most popular things we do. Moms bring their kids to the baby lab. Everyone in Budapest loves the baby lab. CU has surfed on the reputation of the baby lab for about five years, simply because, and this it seems to me is a significant fact about the baby lab. It's a welcoming, sympathetic, humane, and human environment that does credit to the very idea of science and its relationship to the community. So that's one thing that I'm particularly admire and grateful to the leadership at um, CDC for making possible. Um, the other thing that cognitive science in general and CDC does for this university is perfectly obvious. When you look at the stats, the citation rates across the university, there is one absolute standout. It is the most distinguished and productive research unit in our university. That's an incredible achievement for a, an outfit that didn't exist 10 years ago. And we are a very research intensive university. There's a lot of competition to be first, but they are first. And so it allows me to thank the leadership of CDC uh, for that achievement. Also thank them for the incredible way in which they've invited great international figures in this discipline to, um, to the university. And that those visitors have become 
friends, colleagues, and partners. Um, I'm picking at random one of them, who happens to be a personal friend, Dan Sperber. Everybody in the room knows Dan Sperber's work. Dan has done fantastic work at CU and for CU, and it's my opportunity to thank him wherever he is. Where are you, Dan? There you are. Um, that's the kind of collaboration, that's the kind of welcoming that CDC has done, of which I am personally think is a model for the rest of the university. Um, now, the transition to Vienna, just to get there quickly, um, we have committed to um, maintain the labs here in a transition phase because there's still experimental work going on and there's still a cohort of moms who want to bring their babies here and there are other experiments going on in the lab which are extremely important. So we want to maintain the continuity of the research environment in, in Budapest and then simultaneously build out uh, lab facilities in Vienna. And we've, the university is committed to do that. And uh, so everybody in the room needs to know that CDC will be able to continue its research program uninterrupted through the transition to Vienna. Uh, and I hope that, I don't hope, I'm pretty confident that we will have a 20th anniversary and a 30th anniversary and a 40th anniversary of this incredible uh, facility. Um, finally, to get to the blush-making part of this, um, I wanted to present to uh, Gergo Chibra and Gergo Gerge um, a little certificate from CU that they can put on their walls and it's a tiny way in which the university wants to acknowledge them for a decade of incredible intellectual leadership in their own fields, but incredible leadership for CEU as a whole. And so I hope you'll join me in applauding and making these folks blush for their incredible achievement. So, so then, um, as, as I told you, we had this opening conference 10 years ago. These are the, the speakers of that conference, photos actually taken at that, at, at that conference. And so for the 10 years anniversary, we thought that we would try to do something similar. We learned from Dan Sperber that in cultural items there is no such thing as replication, just reproduction. So we asked, asked the speakers to, to try to reproduce a similarly good uh, conference. So that's why each of them should uh, nominate a, uh, a speaker. And so they did, uh, or I should say we did. And so these are the, 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 the speakers for this conference today. Mike Tomasello nominated Hannes Rakoti. Mark Johnson nominated Thea Gliga. Uh, Susan Carey nominated Lisa Feigenson, Ellen Leslie nominated uh, Melissa Kibbe, Dan Sperber nominated Olivia Mascaro, uh, Susan Gelman nominated Marjorie Rhodes, I nominated uh, Agi Kovács, and Yuri nominated uh, Ernő Teglás. So the, uh, the workshop is going to be practically eight talks by these people. They will, have, they will be introduced by their nominator, they will have 45 minutes to talk, and then we will have uh, 10 minutes for questions. Uh, I'm going to chair the whole, uh, whole, whole session. If you, if you have a question, raise your hand, and then, and then the microphone will be delivered to you, that, uh, so you can, we are, we are going to record the whole session so that uh, it's important to talk to the microphone. And also, uh, uh, the, uh, the whole, workshop is streamed today on upstairs in 106. So in, in case you don't find a seat here and it could, could be more people are coming, then there are, uh, you can find seats uh, upstairs there uh, and from tomorrow in, 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 in 10, 103. 